Hey there everyone, welcome back to Lead Coding. So it is 8 a.m. in the morning and I am solving the contest number 226. It is the second problem of the contest. I am going to upload this soon after the contest ends. So do hit the subscribe button to get more such content in future as well and press the bell icon because I am frequently uploading videos. Alright, so now let us start solving the question. So there is an integer array nums that consists of n unique elements but you have forgotten it. However, you do remember every pair of adjacent element in nums. You are given a 2D integer array adjacent pair of size n minus 1 where adjacent i it denotes a pair which is adjacent to each other in the original array. It is guaranteed that every adjacent pair of nums i and nums i plus 1 will exist in in the array which is given to us. Alright, so let us say if the original array that we have to find out is 1, 2, 3, 4. So how many adjacent pairs are there? So one pair is 1, comma 2 or 2 comma 1 so it is present here then another pair adjacent pair is 2 comma 3 so 2 comma 3 or 3 comma 2 they both are adjacent so that is also present and the last 3 comma 4 3 comma 4 is also present similarly for this example it is the same and for the last example also so we are given every adjacent pair now we have to uh, we have to recompute or remake the original array using this Alright, so while I was solving this question, the first thing that is striked in my mind is like if we find out the adjacent elements of this and it is forming a chain like structure, right? So like if we have the adjacent elements and if we make a plot, if we make a graph of it, we will get a chain like structure. For example, let me just take this 213432, 2134 and 3 2 if we have these adjacent pairs and if we make a graph using these so 2 and 1 are connected in the graph 3 and 4 are connected in the graph and last is 3 and 2 so 3 and 2 are connected in the graph now if we look into this if we start from 1 then 1 is connected to 2 2 is connected to 3 3 is connected to 4 it is forming a chain like structure we just have to find this chain and that is why we just have to create a graph using this one using the edges which are given. So let us consider them as edges and make a graph using these edges. So we will get a structure like this. Now in this structure what next we can do is to generate the output what next we can do is we can run a DFS starting from 1 or we can run a DFS starting from 4. Why only 1 and 4 and why not 2 and 3? The reason is if we start a DFS let's say from 2. If we start a DFS from 2 then uh, maybe it will go to 3 then the DFS will go to 4 and then it will go to 1 and that will give us the wrong answer it is going to give us 3 uh, 2 3 4 and and at last it will give us 1 I think this this one wait a second 2 and 3 3 and 4 4 and yeah this is not correct I think alright so we have to start from either terminal so the terminal is 1 or 4. How we can know the terminal? So when we create the graph, we will be creating the graph with the help of maps or unordered maps. So corresponding, so map of 2 corresponding to 2, what I'm gonna store? I will be storing 1 and so 2 is adjacent to 1 and 3. Corresponding to 3, I'm going to store 2 and 4 inside the map. This is how we create the graphs, right? Then adjacent map of 1 is only 2 and map of 4 is only 3. So there are two elements inside the map which are adjacent to only one elements and there are other rest of the elements are adjacent to two elements. So these two are the terminals. Let me just uh, try to explain this better with the help of the code. So let us go to the code here. <coughs> so the first step is to create the map or the graph. I'm going to use a map. You can also use unordered map. That will give you better complexity. So this is my map. I'm going to each of the pair one by one. Let me denote the adjacent pair by A. And corresponding to A of 0, I'm going to push back A of 1 and corresponding to A of 1 I'm going to push back A of 0 so this is how we create graph now our graph is done now we got that chain like structure now in that chain like structure I will have to find the terminals 
so I will be going to each of the element inside the map if a dot second a dot second gives us the vector it is going to give us the vector that means how many elements are adjacent to a a dot second dot size if it is equal to 1 then it is one of the terminals so we can take head we can take a variable head outside head and we can make the head as a dot first okay so now we have the terminal and now we have the graph that we need now in this graph I'm going to do a DFS void DFS inside the DFS I'm going to pass a map of int comma vector of int this is the graph then a set because we don't want the elements to be repeated otherwise our DFS like it might go infinite times so this is this step involved in the DFS only we create a visited array or maybe a visited set you can also use unordered set here that will give you better complexity so I'm taking this visited now this is the element on which we are currently on and then last thing that I'm going to take is a vector that we need to return as the answer I'm going to generate this answer now I'm on the element a so if v dot find a is not equal to v dot end that means we have already computed this element we have already come to this element so we are just going to return from here otherwise we are visiting this element for the first time and hence we will be pushing it back in the answer and at the same time I will insert it into the visited array and then I will go to other elements from here for auto x belong to these are the elements adjacent to a map of a and I'm going to do the DFS on this so DFS I will have to pass M then V then X and then answer so we are done with the DFS I think yeah now let me create the set of int visited a vector of int answer and now I will be calling this function DFS from here pass M pass the visited array and then the head and the answer head is the element from which we are starting so after this let me try to run this to see if there are any compilation errors 4 3 2 1 I think we are getting correct answer let me just submit it now and it got accepted alright so you can do slight modifications here you can use unordered set instead of sets and you can solve this problem in a better way but this is the first thing that came into my mind like forming a chain like structure so from the edges which were from the uh, like elements which are given to us I considered them as edges and using those edges I was able to draw this graph now in this graph I can simply run a DFS the DFS could be started from either terminals so so that it only goes into one direction there's the main motive behind starting it from the terminals basically if we start from one then it will only go into single direction that is from one it will go to two from two it will go to three from three it will go to four if we start from four, four it will go to three then one sorry three then two then one if we start from three then it will go let's say it goes to two first so it will go to two then it will go to one and then it will start again from four and that will give us the wrong answer that is why we will have to start from either terminal now you can tell me the time complexity and the space complexity of the solution into the, into the comment section and I will verify it once the contest is over or if you want me to do it now you can easily understand the complexity here is because we are only having two edges at max so the complexity is only the total number of elements which are there that will be the space complexity now talking about the time complexity it is equal to the DFS that we are doing here so as there is a restriction on the number of edges it is uh, equal to the total number of elements which are there in the uh, in the uh, output array big O of n we can say alright so this is it for the solution if you like the video Make sure to hit that like button and do subscribe to the channel for more such content in future. Thank you.